secret has been hidden from the world for far too long. But now... In order to become successful, a lot of times you have to find your zone that's comfortable for you. When you come to that crossroad, and you get to a certain age where you have that epiphany where what the hell am I going to do with the rest of my life and you don't even have a plan yet, that's when it's time to start writing your shit down. Sometimes, you know, life decisions and life choices steer you another path, but, you know, mistakes are given being a human. You know, we don't have to be perfect. One day the world's going to have to come around and, and, and recognize that, yeah, this is different, but there's nothing like this out here. You have to let your imagination run wild when it comes to your career, period. Most people only plan for what they think they can get. The universe doesn't like that. The universe wants you to go for what you think is impossible. Dr. King said your character is built not during times of comfort and convenience, but during times of conflict and controversy. When you see an obstacle, don't let it deter you. You either can go over it, around it, <laughs> or through it, depending on your own strength. I've been through a lot of stuff in life, but never once have I felt like this is the end of my path. You have to put up your own money. That's independence. If someone else is putting up the money, that's dependence. If you don't see yourself coming out as a boss at that place, then get the fuck out of there. You know, for you to develop this phenomenal movie, Secret to Balling, our young people with television, all of this is right in front of them. So they'll see a Snoop Dogg, Chris Brown, Kelly Rowland. They'll see a Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith. And they do it so easy. You see, when you're good at what you do, they just think that it just come like that. When they see Chris Brown slide across the stage and dance in unison with all the other dancers and Snoop Dogg come out and does his thing, or Kelly Rowland when she was with um, um, Destiny's, Destiny's Child, Child. Or even on her own, and all of the other phenomenal individuals that are in Secret to Ballin', our young people perceive it almost in the immediate. It's called spatiality. Spatiality. Spatiality is like if you put one big ball on one side of a table and five little balls on the other side and you ask a child which is more there's a chance they'll pick the one big ball because to them spatially big means more hmm. as opposed to five small balls which really is more hmm. when conflicts happen on television I, I visited South Carolina this summer I was asked by the community in Charlotte to come in and talk to the community about the horrific events that had happened in that church when the nine brothers and sisters had been shot. Right. And I was asked to come in and I told them, look, my area of specialty is children, so I'm not coming in to tell you the same thing that all the other great speakers have come in to tell you. I want to talk to you about the children. And one of the interesting incidences that happened during my presentation was there was a mother there that was a churchgoer. Didn't go to that particular church, but went to church. Right. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm very upset with my daughter because she's, she don't want to go to church no more. She's lost her faith in God. Hmm. And so I began to question the young sister and come to find out, you know, in our homes and on television, what was the thing we kept hearing? Black folk ain't even safe in church no more. Hmm. We can get shot in church. Shot so what the little girl was scared of, she was afraid to go to church because she thought she was going to get shot. It wasn't that she didn't love God. It didn't, wasn't that she didn't want to go to church. It's that so many people around, well, hey, we're not even safe in church no more. Wow. But that little girl was listening to that. And so in her little mind, she perceived, if I go to church, I'm going to get shot. This is how our children think, and that is why the movie, the documentary, Secret to Born is so important because it demonstrates to our children the kind of dedication and due diligence that Snoop Dogg and Chris Brown, Redman? Redman, yes, sir. 
Wu Tang Clan. Wu Tang Clan. Come on, name them because yeah. I can't name everybody. Wu Tang Clan. Faith Evans. Yes. Faith Evans, who was married yes. to Biggie Smalls. Yes. You know, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, Reverend Edwards, Clifton Bishop, Clifton Edwards Jr., and as well yeah. as yourself. Yes. Be Real from Cypress Hill, who are Latinos, and Baby Bash. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of those that you named, for them to do what they do, it takes hours of practice and diligence and years. Right. For them to get what they do well, but they do. They practice so hard for their success, it seems like it's easy. Hmm. It seems like it's easy. <laughs> yeah, right. because they do right. it so well. You right. know, when you see them do what they do in the right. area where they do it, when you right. see Reverend Beckwith speaking at his pulpit and the words are flowing out of his mouth so right. smoothly, right. people don't know it took him years to practice to his delivery. That. Right, right. So the secret to bowling is due diligence. Hmm. It's work ethic. Yes. Research. That's it. That's it. And practice. Imagination. <laughs> yes, all of that. And constantly. Right. Chris Brown just don't get out on the stage like that and slip across the stage, dance like that, right. just on one try. Right. He's had hours and hours of practice of that. When I go out and do presentations, there are some times that there may be a 10-minute segment of my presentation. That 10-minute segment, I sometimes have to research. It takes me a month wow. to do 10 minutes of a presentation. Hmm. It takes me time to stand before the mirror and practice my facial expressions. And it goes with everyone that does whatever they do. And that's what Secret to Ballin does. It takes the veil away from what is success, which is hard work. Definitely. And we come from generations of African folk hmm. who not only put in hard work, but they risk their lives. Hmm. The performers that we have today are where they are because our, our past performers couldn't even stay in the hotel hmm. where they were performing. Right. They have to stay in the inn. They have to stay with friends. They have to drive because they could not take the bus or the train. Mm. And I'm talking about people like Sammy Davis Jr. and Sam Cooke. <laughs> My grandfather, he played in the Negro League. He told me stories okay. about that. Yeah, with Satchel That's Paige. Bottom. Right. That, that is the success that we stand on those shoulders. They put in work, and not only were they good at what they did, but they had to go through the trials and tribulations of the worst of white supremacy when it wasn't like it is today. Wasn't televised. It wasn't televised. Right. Wasn't there. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many folk got shot in the back eight times? Nobody knew that. Nobody knew that. You know, how, you know, how many of our women, you know, you know, have been put in prison and, and by, died? And, viola and also violated, raped and, and violated. Absolutely. Right. And couldn't even open up their mouth. How many children were taken right up off the street and nobody ever put their face on a milk carton? Hmm. And so what we're trying to tell our children and what made me excited about being part of Hip Hop Motivation and my appreciation for you, Brother Kenyatta, for what you're doing, because I know we spoke about your intent. Yes, sir. And, and that was to talk to our young people. Definitely. And to get them to understand, if you want to be successful, you must have a work ethic. You have to work at what you do. You, Dr. Clark, my teacher, great historian, used to always say, perfect your craft. And what he meant by that is always be evolving. Always be getting better. Never get to the point where you think you've arrived. Because where we're going has no destination. It's just a journey. Wow. And we just got to keep getting better. Perfect your craft. That's what I tell young people. Perfect your craft. Whatever it is, get better at it. Be better tomorrow than you were today. And be better today than you were yesterday. Hmm. And have a 10-year plan. Yes. A 10-year plan. It takes patience. It does. It takes a lot of patience, man. This was, a, yes, this was an incredible journey. And I just want to tell you, I was like, really, it was a pleasure to have you 
in this movie because I know you're a busy man and and when I asked you to do it you you were all for it you know because you know children and just speaking to the youth in general is your passion mm. and I also witnessed your passion when you were talking to me about it and you you know you asked me a few questions and you didn't you didn't really ask anymore you just said okay where should we meet and we met at mm. the park and we did a wonderful interview with you which is also yeah. you know also going to be put out there uh, in its entirety because mm. you said a lot of wonderful things you know yes. and and I, what I wanted to do with this movie was create a platform for everyone to develop their own workshop around <laughs> develop mm -hmm. their own workshop around the movie yes, you, yes. you know yourself Method Man and Chris yeah. Brown and all these great people yes. and uh, you know it was just a pleasure doing it man there was a, there was some uh, there was some obstacles but those obstacles actually were things that put us on the right path and kept us yes. going yes actually. You know, I remember when it happened because I was in Los Angeles to, to do other work. Right. And I remember um, I received a call. And in fact, it was, I believe it was Reverend Beckwith's brother. Yeah, Akili. Yes, Akili. You in contact with me. Right. And what, what occurred from that perspective is that it, it was, I heard about it on a Saturday. And I had said, listen, have the brother call me tomorrow at 12 noon. I was in sitting in a restaurant drinking uh, some coffee. You called right at twelve noon, because that's one thing you are, brother. You, when you, you know, you are you and Malcolm, man. When you say a time, you're there on that time. When oh, you yeah, say oh, twelve yeah. noon, you, you know, my son Heru still talks yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah, twelve noon. You rolled up. <laughs> thanks, thanks to my mother for that one, because she was yeah, very, man, very. Give mom a she lot was, of man, for that, she was man, very regimented in her activity with us. Yeah, she said, "Be no on doubt. time. Be on time." Yeah, man. Definitely. So 12 noon, right. that call came in. We talked for the first time. And I saw a window of opportunity the next day. Yes. Uh, to be able to meet. Right. Because actually you were supposed to speak at Marcus Garvey. Yes. When something happened. Yes. I think the, uh, the times got mixed up or it got canceled yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, well, the, well, the times were, were shifted. Shifted. Right. Which opened up that, that time like from 2 in the afternoon until like 4.30. Right. I remember that. And I was like, that's, that's amazing. God, they, well, they say God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, man. And that was an yes. example of it. That was a definite example of mysterious, yeah. mysterious way. Because the interview would have happened, but it would have happened indoors. Yes. Because it would have been dark. Right. So in that avenue at uh, that time from two to four opening up, what that allowed us to do was to go over to the park. Exactly. Sun was up. Yes, absolutely. and it was a wonderful day. <laughs> a wonderful day, yes. And, and you know, the angle of where, and I'm sitting on a rock, man. I don't know if people know that. I'm sitting on, yeah, the, rock, sit on the rock, and sister got the big yeah. boom. Yeah. Uh, um, Michelle, Michelle had the boom mic, and Carolyn yeah, had the camera. She was wearing the camera. And I was feeling right. sorry for sister because her arm had to be right, out there right, the whole time. Right, You know, and the other sister was doing her thing, and then, we, you know, we were going back, and, and, and actually I, I observed and, Everything that you're going to see as it relates, that's the sun, right? In, what's, what's the name of that park that we were in? Because there we was Van a, a that community was Van center. Van Ness Park. Say again? Van Ness Park on Slauson. Van Ness. Okay. Yes. So folk from L.A. going to know. Yeah, that's Van Ness Park. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And my brother, you can still see me and hear me? Yeah, I can see you and hear you, yes. Okay, because I've, because I've lost, uh, you know, my vision for it. Oh, okay. Let me see if uh, anything's changed. Everything's still good on my end. Your end will probably come back up. I can still see you. We're still recording. Okay, good. Yeah, I can still okay, see you. Okay, here we go. I brought you back. Okay. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was, uh, you know, and, you know, that day. And remember, uh, I basically, um, I don't know when I received the uh, questions from you uh, as it related to that, I think we may have gone over it when we met because yeah. I don't think we had time to talk about it on nah. the phone that Sunday. No, nah, you did a lot of chat. That was a channeling interview. You channeled that information. Yeah. Because yeah, a lot because, of stuff you, you know, didn't. Yeah, you yeah didn't, the point I'm trying to make, brother, yeah. is that I did not really know or have the time to flesh out my responses. So for folk that may see this and know this, the other thing to know is that when you're looking at Secret to Ballin', my responses were straight up from my heart, my spirit, and my soul. Yes. And, and I was saying what I truly felt. And that's another side to it because, and that's how I like to do things. It's not always like that because sometimes I have time to prepare. Right. 
But because of the nature of what we were talking about, brother, it was just so dear to my heart because I spent time with our children. I spent my life as a, as a teacher here in New York, South Central Bronx. Just like you have a South Central LA, yeah. we have a South Central Bronx. South Central Bronx, okay. Never 31 been. years I spent in Community School District 9. Wow. Taught from pre-K straight through high school. Mm-hmm. Then became college professor. And so the young people have been near and dear to my heart because I never forgot what it was like to be young. Yes. So that's why I tried not to criticize them because I know that there's a lot that we go through. Right. And uh, I don't need to be all up in your face. You know what's going on. <laughs> you know what it is. Yeah. You know what's going on. Yes. Yeah, you know. You know. Yeah, yeah. And so if we just break the truth down to you and we create a safe haven for you. Right. And you get a sense of what success is and you'll understand whatever it is that you want to do. Even with my own children. I never told them what to do. I just said whatever you do, be the best at what you do. Right. Due diligence. Yes. And work ethic. Work. work ethic. It takes work. It does, man. Success is work. Right. And the more work you put into something, the prouder you can be of your success. You're right. Because it don't come easy, man. It sure doesn't. Yeah. And it shouldn't come easy. <laughs> Anything that you seek has a shortcut. The end result is going to be a cut short of the greatest that you can be. Right. Don't take no shortcuts. Take the main road. <laughs> you know? That's a good way to put it. Cabo, I really appreciate you giving Our me that time. to internalize this. Yes. Yes. And this Friday, The Secret of Ballin will be available on Vimeo On Demand. And uh, I just wanted to tell you from myself, Carolyn, and Michelle, we really appreciate you being involved in this film. You know, it was an honor, mm-hmm. definitely. And, uh, you know, The Secret of Ballin 2 will be in development, you know, once we get all this rolling. But it, it was just an honor, man. It was a pleasure to have you in the film. And, and we're grateful and gracious of that, you know. And all praises due, definitely, to yeah. the Father. Yes. All praises. No doubt. <laughs> yes. No doubt, man. It, you know, we just got to keep on keeping on, brother. Definitely. It ain't over till we win. Right. Keep working at it. Like you said, work ethic. It's going to take work. That's it, man. It's going to take work. And stay with the children, man. Never let them go. Definitely. No matter what. We love them unconditionally. They're our right. children. Gang banger, drug pusher, pimp, prostitute. I love our people unconditionally. I may not necessarily agree with your behavior, mm-hmm. but I still love you. I may not like certain things that are happening. But I still love you because any black person still alive in America, after all that has happened to us, I got nothing but love and respect for you. <laughs> You're right about that. Yeah. We're the offsprings of that. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> we are the people who in our DNA, we have the pyramid builders hmm. DNA in us of the ancient world. Right. We have the plantation dwellers. Right. We have our people who lived on the, in, in the project, as I did. Hmm. But we also have the people who will inherit the promised land. Most definitely. We just got to keep on keeping on because it ain't over till we win. And as our brother, Mayor Chokwe Lumumba of Jackson, Mississippi said, after we do reach that goal, then it's time to free the land. Because we are not the only ones hurt in all of this. Yes. The water needs to be cleaned. The air needs to be cleaned. We have to uh, repair the earth, man. Yeah. So there's a lot of work that we have to do, and we have been divinely challenged by the Creator. We, as African Americans, who have who have experienced something that no other human being, as a collective group, has ever experienced in the known history of the world. No one has had so much thrown at them. No one has been dehumanized. Even if you've been mistreated, you still considered a human being. Right. We were dehumanized. Dehumanized. They took everything from us. Our history, our language, our values, interests, and principles. They took that from us and superimposed their own. So any decision we came to had to be in our worst interest and in their best interest because we thought like them. Yep. But look at us, brother. We're talking about the secrets to balling. Hmm. And the fact that any of us are balling is a miracle. <laughs> exactly. Any All form of success. Get, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All we got to do is get our young people to get that same thought. 
So, brother, I congratulate you and your team for all the work that you've done, man. And it was equally proud. It was, I was very proud to be a part of this, and I've watched it develop over the time that it has, man. And you've done your due diligence, brother. And, and, and I wish you nothing but the greatest of success in your future for all the other. And this is only but one of the many steps you'll take to your greatness, brother, along with all others that will be with you. And I'm just so proud to be here. And I'm with you, brother. Thank you. That's I'm powerful. with you all the way. <laughs> That's powerful. I appreciate it, Kaba. And we will talk soon. Thank you. Look forward to it, brother. Stay strong. My regards to my family in Los Angeles. Peace, brother. Hotel. Hotel. Hotel.